Hey guys, Jose Villablanca here. Um, <clears throat> thanks for joining me today. And I wanna share with you um, some tips on uh, <laughs> rest and recovery. She's still under the um, holistic classic coaching um, umbrella. So if for anyone watching out there right now, if you don't know who I am, uh, let me just briefly tell you a bit about myself. So I have over a decade of uh, experience in North America with multiple certifications in functional fitness and holistic lifestyle coaching. And uh, basically I'm the founder of a growing leader in corporate wellness, um, which is called Holy Fit. All right, um, if you have any questions, if you wanna reach out, um, you can either comment below or email me, check out my website. All right, email me here at info at holyfit.ph. Follow us, like us on Facebook, holyfitph, um, and Instagram as well, same handle. Um, for my personal Instagram account, it is Holistic Jose. All right, let's get started. Like I said earlier, um, I want to talk about rest and recovery. Um, it's highly neglected. Think of um, fit or sorry, wellness, a like a uh, stool, a three-legged stool. All right, first is exercise. All right, we all know that in order to get healthy and fit, you need to exercise. Two is nutrition. Obviously, you have to have a good diet to support your um, energy needs when you exercise and also after exercise and so your post-workout nutrition and everything in between as well. And third, which is highly neglected, is our topic today, rest and sleep. Because, um, you know, we'd rather do other things and stay active and some people feel like they're wasting a third of their life when they go to sleep, right? But I want you to think this way. The phones need to be recharged when the battery is low and computers need to reboot when it slows down, right? Or sometimes you refresh the screen when things slow down. Now ask yourself this, why don't you systematically rest and recover on a regular basis? So you don't burn out, right? When things are slowing down, you can't think, your mood is off, um, you're not productive, whatever it may be. This is a great sign that you need to rest and recover and reboot, all right? Move on to the next slide. Um, so re, right, I said a lot, re, relax, reboot, all right, re. Basically it's an occurring, originally in, basically I Googled the definition of re, because I see it a lot. Uh, and basically means uh, again and again and again to indicate repetition or with their meaning back or backward to indicate withdrawal or backward motion. For example, regenerate, refurbish, retype, retrace, revert, right? Rest, re, no, ST, no. Recover, recharge, right? Those words. A few examples of the re that I was just saying. So lax, fresh, lax for relax, fresh for refresh, right? Boot, reboot, recharge, recover, reinvigorate, restore, Right, I just took out the re and I just looked at the, the root word itself. So it's lax, fresh, boot, charge, cover, invigorate, store, plenish, generate. I like generate, you generate energy and then you regenerate, right? Just to get more energy. Store, you want to restore the energy, right? Vert, revert, restore. Oh my God, that's twice there. <laughs> okay, note taken. Rewind, right? Like I like to think of those toys where you have to wind it up to play with it and then like the toy car and then you let it go and just goes, right? If you want it to go again, you have to rewind it, the recoil, the thingy, and boom, doohickey. I don't know the words too much. Vitalize, revitalize, vibe. It's a vibe, yo. Just kidding. And revive. Obviously, it's a different word. Um, all right. I'd like to say it this way. There can't be peaks without the valleys. What does that mean? Basically it means um, peaks are the exercise, it peaks, for example, um, perfect for exercise, peaks actually, sorry, signify exercise, work, social life, um, anything that has to do with um, spending energy. While valleys are the downtime, like sleep, you know, getting, um, going for a vacation, right? anything that doesn't, um, do with a regular routine that you do on a daily basis, daily, weekly, monthly basis, okay? So these are things that break it up um, from your regular routine, right? Depending on how you like to um, recharge. Okay, think of it like, sorry, 
peaks and valleys, right? So you know that machine where it checks your pulse at doot, doot, right? Doot, there's peaks and valleys, right? But when you don't, um, what happens when someone dies, right? It flatlines, right? By the same token, you should have peaks and valleys in your life because um, I'll explain to that in a few slides shortly. Um, it's because when you have those peaks, right? For example, exercise, it naturally wakes us up and energizes us and gives us the endorphins um, to do things, right? It gives us the natural boost in energy, right? That's a peak. Not only that, but um, it makes us uh, sleep better at night, deeper sleep at night, right? It's this simple karma. When people say, you know, um, I'd love to start exercising, but I don't have the energy to do it. Well, you get what you give, karma, right? So once you start exercising more and more, um, that means you sleep better at night, right? So for people who actually have a problem with sleeping and sleeping early and getting enough sleep, start exercising, right? Because you give so much energy during the day, at night, you're gonna go sleep way much better. I promise you that. If it doesn't work, give me a call, I'll help you. <laughs> I, I truly believe that. It works with all my clients. Okay, um, another thing I want you to do is follow the rise and fall of the sun, okay? Why is that? Because we are not nocturnal beings, okay? Um, owls, for example, they do well at night. Um, a perfect example that we're not nocturnal beings is because um, we have bad vision at night, okay? Um, I was in Bali like last year and we were doing this tour about the cot coffee luwak, cafe luwak, if you know what that is. So it's basically like a cat that eats coffee beans, right? And then they poop it out, right? And then um, it's a highly priced type of coffee because for some reason, you know, in their digestive system, it um, makes it ferment or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, we drink the coffee that the cat poops out, right? And then the tour guide showed us, you know, during that um, process that they cannot actually see during the day. Okay, just like bats come out at night, um, it's really uh, different, right? We're not nocturnal beings, sorry, just uh, message popped up right there. Uh, we're creatures of habit. So if you have a hard time sleeping at night or sleeping early or getting enough sleep, guess what? It's a habit that you actually built consciously or subconsciously. So I'll show you and how you can create a habit that makes you actually sleep better and earlier at night. Um, here's the thing too, we, we like to follow routine. We're creatures of habit. Um, we, by default, follow a routine, right? So during the day, what do you do when you wake up, right? Um, wash your face, take a shower. Some people like to shower, you know, before they go to sleep so that they're actually clean when they get in bed, right? Um, brush your teeth, wash your hair. Sorry, brush your hair, drink coffee, whatever it may be, right? Um, we follow routines be it good, good habits or bad habits, we do it um, mindlessly by default, all right? Um, so that goes the same for um, your sleeping routines. So um, another way we like to call this is circadian rhythms, all right? What's a circadian rhythm? It's basically something you do physically, mentally, and behaviorally that changes, behavioral changes, sorry, that follows a daily cycle. Okay, um, for example, uh, people respond primarily to light and darkness in an organism's environment. Sleeping at night and being awake during the day is an example of a light-related circadian rhythm. Me, for example, I love working out, well, not love. I enjoy working out first thing in the morning. Why is that? Because again, it wakes me up, gets me ready for the day, um, and I get, you know, I get to exercise first thing in the morning, get it out of the way as opposed to working out at night right? When you're tired, you're after work, you might be stressed, or there might be social events, right? Um, because I work out first thing in the morning, it gives me the endorphins, makes me, you know, feel a lot better. Um, and uh, some people actually they do better at night when they work out because they're, they're less groggy um, and they'd rather just go to work, right? They don't want to wake up too early just to start exercising. So that is an example of the circadian rhythm. And guess what? Um, lack of sleep has actually been linked to obesity. And numerous studies show this. You could actually, um, book I read recently was uh, Sleep Science, I believe. 
I mean, it, it cites a few examples of why we should actually, or how it actually makes us fatter, okay? Um, numerous studies show how it alters metabolism and makes our body store more fat, all right? Can you believe that? Not getting enough sleep can actually make you fat, all right? Uh, new evidence of sleep deprivation has a direct influence on basic metabolism and the body's balance between fat and muscle mass. And this is based on the, um, the journal Science Advances. Okay. A study by Dr. Oh, I'm going to butcher this. Sidernes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't want to say his name. Sorry, Doc, if you're watching, which I highly doubt show that even a short period of sleep deprivation led people to eat more and up for higher calorie foods. Why is that? Because calories are energy, right? Not only do we choose high calorie foods, but we also choose um, high sugar stuff, right? High fat stuff. Um, it's because uh, it, it, it helps with our, uh, no, um, the natural sugar high, right? The energy, right? You get that, but then all of a sudden we dip. Okay. So, when you're trying to compensate for lack of sleep, you drink more coffee, you have high sugary foods, uh, and it actually usually backfires, okay? A study published by, a study published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal showed that, oops, sorry, <laughs> showed that sleep deprivation is directly related to an, to an inability to lose weight. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Okay, so in other words, not getting enough sleep, will actually be harder for you to burn that excess fat. Not only would it make it easier for you to store fat, um, but it'll actually make it harder for you to lose that fat, okay? So make sure you get enough sleep, right? It's not like you're burning fat while you're sleeping, but it, it helps, right? Um, An efficient sleep appears to disrupt hormones that, can, that control appetite and feelings of fullness. And again, um, I think a lot of this stuff that I learned from is obviously from my course, um, from the Holistic Lifestyle Coaching course from the Czech Institute, um, but also from Sleep Science. That was like one of the best um, books I've read. Actually, it was an audio book I listened to, um, or Sleep Smarter, sorry. That was very scientifically proven. Um, I'll, I'll put the link below just so um, you can read through it as well uh, for the book. Rest and sleep is not just necessary for your body, but for your mind. So true, right? When you got to sleep, you don't um, perform better at work, right? Or if you're in school, or if you remember being in school and you had to, you didn't study and then you had an exam the next day, you had to cram, right? It was, uh, you're a lot crankier, uh, you weren't as social, right? You, you had short temper. Um, so it usually doesn't work, right? So ideally, you want to plan accordingly so you get enough sleep every single day. Right? When you lack sleep, you take longer to do the same task. You're more prone to committing mistakes. You have a shorter temper and possible mood swings, which I just explained earlier. Right? Um, and this is the reason why we don't get enough sleep. Right? Um, there's this work culture of sleeping is for the weak. But the, I can't state this or stress this enough. Right? Sleep is actually for the strong because you get stronger when you sleep, right? You get stronger when you rest between workouts, right? Because you rest after a hard workout, your body gets to recover and adapt to the new changes you've given it by, you know, the training stimulus you've given it, stimuli, plural. Um, so when you actually get enough rest, you're actually stronger the next day, all right? So think of your cell phone, right? When it's dead you have to recharge it so it actually make you stronger. But the stigma of, oh, you know, you know, I'm so busy, um, I'm too busy to get enough rest, I'm just gonna drink more coffee, right? Um, that usually doesn't really work, right? Or staying like, oh, I have so many things to do. I actually have more respect for people who actually um, get enough rest, get enough sleep, um, and aren't as busy, but they actually accomplish more. So to me, it's all about task completion more than um, staying busy, because people can stay busy picking their nose, um, watching Netflix, um, playing video games, right? Busy doesn't mean productive or um, um, doing something that means a lot, right? So yeah, make sure you get enough um, rest and sleep um, because if you're just like trying to keep yourself up, drink a lot of coffee, um, you, again, you can't think, you're, you'll have more mood swings. It's like, it's basically like not 
fueling your car um, with gas, but instead of like putting nitrous. So I'm not really a car guy, but you know, using those booster things instead of real gas, right? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm not a car guy. But in, in other words, you need sleep and you can't replace that, period. It's not just the quantity of sleep, but the quality of sleep as well. Um, and I know this um, because here in the Philippines, there are a lot of uh, BPOs or business process outsourcing. So basically, if um, you're watching this and you're not from the Philippines, um, in other words, there are a lot of call centers here where they service their clientele that's in a different time zone. Hence, a lot of graveyard shifts, right? Um, and like I said earlier, um, we're not nocturnal beings, right? Um, so we're supposed to be following the rise and fall of the sun. Um, and yeah, like sleeping from 3 a.m. to say, for example, plus eight hours, three plus eight, eight plus three. So 3 a.m. to 11 a.m. is not the same as sleeping from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., right? You still get eight hours, but it doesn't feel the same or you're still getting eight hours, but you're sleeping at different erratic times, it's not the same, right? Obviously, if you have a graveyard shift and you, know, you really need to do this because it's your livelihood, that's fine. Um, as long as you try to stay consistent with your sleep patterns, simple, right? Um, so here are the top tips on how you can get proper rest and recovery so you could actually perform better um, with your workouts. Um, you want your bedroom as quiet and dark as possible, okay? Um, blackout curtains if you want to. Um, and don't worry, there are no monsters at night if you sleep in pitch black darkness, all right? So keep your cell phone away from you, night lights ideally. Um, keep it away because again, it can wake you up, right? Um, there's some, I read somewhere um, or listened to this audio book that apparently even just a, a quick um, light at the back of your leg or something like that um, actually wakes you up, right? It releases chemicals that wake you up. Um, so yeah, not just light from your eyes, it actually, from your skin, it actually wakes you up, right? So make sure um, you stay in a really dark place and quiet as much as possible for less distraction for you to wake up. Another thing is you want your bedroom cool between 16 and 20 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, so you don't toss and turn, you're not uncomfortable when you're sleeping at night. Um, and as much as possible, you get uninterrupted sleep, okay? So it's not just the darkness, but how you set your room, the right environment, okay? Um, and it's not just how many hours of sleep, like I said earlier, it's what time you get to bed. So obviously follow the rise and fall of the sun, simple as that, right? Um, and in order to do that, you need to keep your smartphone outside of your room, right? Turn it off, um, ideally. Or you can put it in your next room if you can't turn it off. I personally like to turn off my room, not my room, <laughs> my smartphone. But people will say, oh, what if there's an emergency uh, and someone needs to call me, right? Hey, I'll ask you the same question. When was the last time someone actually had to call you in the middle of the night to wake you up because it was an emergency? Most of you might be saying never, right? So I, that's why I turn off my phone because uh, not only don't you get the radio waves and whatever the signal that's trying to pick up so that you're, you're always online, um, it's bad for you, right? Just turn it off so you don't feel tempted at the middle of the night when you wake up to look at your phone, right? And because again, that wakes you up, right? Um, another th technique is to avoid stimulants like electronics, like TV, playing video games, surfing, or caffeine, right? Alcohol, sugar, um, checking your emails, right? Because that can mentally wake you up. That's a stimulant, right? And when you see an email and some bad news from work and you know you have to deal with it tomorrow, it keeps you up, right? So ideally, you should um, be avoiding electronics a few hours, maybe even an hour after sunset so you can wind down, right? The, having a winding down ritual actually really helps. If you have a winding up ritual, like having coffee, reading papers, you know, scanning through Twitter, whatever, checking um, news channels, you should have a winding down ritual to set the tone, right? Um, and this would be one of them. Uh, um, some people, you know, they stop watching TV or maybe stop checking using their laptop, but then they switch to an iPad or, or their smartphone. Um, when they're in bed. And ideally, again, you want to avoid electronics um, after sunset, okay? 
another question, a common question I get asked is, can we really make up on sleep over the weekend? And the answer is no, because for example, um, you only had four hours of sleep on Wednesday. What do you do to compensate for that on Thursday? Have more coffee, right? Yes, you kind of do um, catch up on sleep as well on the weekend, but it's not the same because it kind of changes your um, biochemistry. You know, if you don't get sleep, like I said a few slides earlier, you're crankier, moody, um, you can't really think straight, you're not productive at work, um, you know, you're not the same fun person in the social life. So yeah, try to get enough sleep because I want you to think of it this way much of what we do at night can be done during the day with proper planning and organization. I say, but what about my, you know, I like to chill and watch Netflix at night and whatever, you know, YouTube, whatever, right? Do it on the weekend or during, during lunch break or during, during the day, right? So that you don't have that many stimulants, right? And then you can just rest and recover at night. Um, I know there's nightlife and hang out with friends, having a few drinks, it's a different story, right? Nobody really drinks during the day, unless you're an alcoholic, <laughs> right? But yeah, that's why once in a while, um, it's fine to do it. Um, you know, we live in a modern day and age, so I guess do what you can, right? A few other tips is uh, take supplements that actually help you sleep. Um, Chamomile, right? I drink chamomile tea every so often. Um, I don't really need it personally, but um, whenever I do remember, I have tea. And again, a few hours before sleeping so that you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night and pee it out, right? Um, kava kava as well. I don't know if I've actually tried this. I think I have. Um, I can't remember. Tried a few things as well before because you know, I don't want to practice what I don't preach, right? So kava kava is actually a drink deriving from Fiji. It has a natural sedative reducing the time it takes you to drift off to sleep. Another thing you can do is valerian. Um, again, it's like tea as well you can have. Um, and it can help with uninterrupted sleep because that's quality sleep, uninterrupted sleep. Um, and don't rely on melatonin, right? Um, because there's evidence that actually suggests it decreases your natural ability to produce the hormone. And melatonin is a hormone, not a vitamin. Um, and then a few other things I like to do as well is um, I like to use my Fitbit, right, to track my sleep because there's, uh, I think, three or four different stages of sleep, right? Light sleep, um, heavy, deep sleep, REM, and non-REM sleep. So I think I remember correctly. Fortunately, I didn't put in my slides here. Excuse me. But yeah, um, you want to track um, your quality of sleep as well. Because again, the more you can measure, so more, sorry, the more data you have, the more you can measure um, something, right? And the more you can measure something, the more you can improve on something, okay? So see how you actually sleep at night. Um, I like to, actually, I like to use, um, there's this app called, um, I have to put in the comments here, but it actually, it's with your phone. You can use your phone to do it. Um, and because the Fitbit actually emits light, right? I think detects motion through light, you can see that there. Um, and basically it tracks your sleep pattern with, um, by based on your motion, right? Anyway, it kind of goes there. Um, so I, I don't use it when I'm sleeping. Um, I use another app, can't remember the name, but again, I'll put a comment down below. Just remind me, ask me by writing a comment below because I know I'm gonna forget unless someone asks me. <laughs> Um, it tracks your sleep and your tossing and turning by the sound you make at night. So at least there's no light touching your skin, right? Because again, I said earlier, there's evidence where they put a laser light at the back of someone's knee sleeping and apparently changed their biochemistry, slowly woke them up. So yeah, um, it actually tracks how you sleep based on the sound that you make from tossing and turning. So again, I'll, I'll send that to you. And it's a really great way. I, I don't track my sleep patterns anymore. I don't think I have a problem with that. I'm pretty consistent. So, but I used to do it when, uh, just to see how I slept actually. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, oh, and I forgot, again, there's another thing I forgot to put here. Um, essential oils. I love my essential oils. In fact, I'm going to grab it right now. 
So I use uh, different brands of essential oils just because I want to see what's out there. Um, I have them right here, as you can see. Okay, so um, yes, someone's thinking that right now. Lavender wasn't in there. Forgot to put that in the slide. So I like to, um, some of the oils here actually are mixed, mixtures of lavender and all that other sleepy stuff, right? Uh, some of it is very calming, right? Aromatherapy in other words, right? So you can even have, um, you know, lavender tea, you can have it, um, it in an essential oil format, right? I even have a essential oil diffuser right beside my bed. So I put a few drops of that, go to sleep, and I am great. Because again, if you want to be very efficient, if you want to be productive, if you want to be great in your social life, um, getting enough sleep will actually make you uh, better, right? A lot of people focus on doing more, but sometimes you have to focus on doing less, right? Which means getting enough sleep, okay? So um, remember that wellness is a three-legged stool. Exercise, proper nutrition, and rest and sleep. If you're lacking one, you'll be teeter-tottering and you can't have one without the other because it's again, three-legged stool, right? You get more bands. All right, if you have any questions, um, comment down below or feel free to um, email me or message me on Facebook or on Instagram. Check out my website as well. We will be uh, blogging more soon. If you have a topic that you'd like to discuss, if you have any issues, reach a plateau. Um, feel free to reach out. I know our programs can help you. Hopefully this webinar has helped, this presentation has helped. And I just wanna say thank you for watching. Peace out, goodbye, bye.